right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, and guess what? Here it is. It's the Igneous video, folks. So, let's jump right into it. Last time, if you guys remember, I kind of went over just the basic setup of what we got for rocks and the three main types, if you remember correctly, sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. Well, hey, you guys voted on your favorite one, and it turns out it was igneous. So, as you see here, I've got this one back again. This guy's kind of my favorite. <clears throat> we bring it around, and you notice something right away here, that these rocks on this side are substantially bigger in terms of grains than these guys are right here. And, as you might have guessed, there's a reason for that, too. That reason being that these rocks here, as you may have seen in some of my tweets recently, were formed really slowly, and... Um, that gave the crystals a lot of time to form and be really well defined, as you can see all through here, down here in this rock especially as well. These ones a little bit harder to see, but about the same grain sizes. Now, you might think, well, how can they cool so slowly? What causes that? And the answer is these guys formed inside of the Earth's crust. So they did not cool very, very quickly, which gave these crystals to go like this, gave them plenty of time to do that, to get very, very big, very well defined for the most part. Some of them are a little weathered away, things like that, but that's to be expected. Now, as you can see over on the other side here, over on the left, we've got these. And even upon very close examination, I mean, there are very very tiny crystals in there. And uh, most of the time they cannot be seen to the human eye. And these rocks are obviously ones then that have come to the surface and as soon as they hit either the air, in this case, or the water, in this case, they cooled very, very quickly, giving the crystals almost no time to grow, which, and as you can see here in this one, no crystals. This is actually like uh, like the top of a root beer float, except in rock form. So really, really, really foamy. This is actually called pumice. And then this one here and the one down here in the bottom left are called basalts. So the two types and more or less, they're the same rocks. A lot of the times they're the same minerals. They just uh, look a little bit different. And the big difference between them is that the intrusive rocks, as you can see here, have a much larger crystal to what's called ground mass or the surrounding rock ratio than these rocks do. And so then we've got the two categories, intrusive and extrusive. And then from there, different minerals come in. It may mix with other things. It may mix with the crust. It may mix with some metamorphic rocks. It may even mix with some sedimentary rocks. You never know. And the nice thing about that, though, is that within these crystals here, even in both sets of rocks, we can see what types of things that uh, molten rock mixed with before we found it sitting here today. It says, I gave you the brief overview, but there are some things that um, I feel do need to be explained with the igneous rocks, and uh, I mean, we've got plenty of time. We'll go into all that later. So guys, let me know what you think, and um, be sure to comment, rate, subscribe if you like this stuff. Not a lot of people do, but those that find it useful, or uh, if you have any feedback for me in terms of that, you know, any criticism, constructive or destructive, not a big deal. I'd be more than happy to hear it. If you're still watching, thank you very much, and I hope your day rocks. We'll see you later, guys.